In this video, I introduce the Cobb Douglas utility function, and I show some useful properties that demonstrate why we use Cobb Douglas utility so frequently. Here's a Cobb Douglas utility function. It takes bundles of x and y. It uh, takes x to the alpha power, and it takes y to the 1 minus alpha power. And here we're thinking that alpha is some number between 0 and 1. Think of it as a share. Later on, we'll show why you should think of it as a share. Let's go ahead and compute the marginal rate of substitution for this utility function. Now, remember, the marginal rate of substitution is the ratio of marginal utilities, marginal utility of x over marginal utility of y. The marginal utility of x is the derivative of this utility function with respect to x. So we can just use the power rule. Think of y 1 minus alpha as a constant. Alpha times x to the alpha minus 1, that's the power rule part, and then just bring the y part around, along for the ride. If we take the exponent to the negative power, we can put the x in the denominator. And now we can go ahead and combine the terms. Similarly, we could take the marginal utility of y. That's just the partial derivative of the Cobb-Douglas utility function with respect to y. Using the power rule on the y part, thinking of the x to the alpha as a constant. We can go ahead and collect some terms here. x to the alpha, y to the minus alpha, bring the y to the denominator. And there's our marginal utility of y. Now one thing that you can do, and it's going to be kind of useful to do this, we could, uh, we could take the reciprocal of the inside of this marginal utility of y, and we can make it the, to the negative alpha power. Now we're ready to compute marginal rate of substitution, which is marginal utility of x over marginal utility of y. Now what you'll notice is that we've got in the denominator a y over x to the minus alpha power. We want to bring that up to the numerator. We can just make it to the positive alpha power, keep it as y over x. I'm going to bring these coefficients out front. Here's the numerator y over x, that's to the 1 minus alpha power. Remember bringing this y over x to the minus alpha to the numerator has a, uh, brings it to the positive alpha power. What we'll see is that when we combine this y over x term with that y over x term, the exponents will add, we'll get 1 minus alpha plus alpha, and it will be y over x to the first power. So here we have it. We have a, an expression for the Cobb-Douglas marginal rate of substitution. So we can go and clean this up a little bit. But one thing to note about this expression for marginal rate of substitution is that it's constant for a given ray out of the origin. Um, so if we consider a, a straight line protruding from the origin, that straight line is going to give us a, uh, uh, a constant y over x ratio, and this tells us that along this straight line, all of the indifference curves that pass through this point have the same slope. So Cobb-Douglas utility looks like this, that along rays out of the origin, it looks like a parallel shift of the indifference curves. Now let's use this marginal rate of substitution expression and a little bit about what we know about consumer maximization of utility to get the Cobb-Douglas demand curve. The marginal rate of substitution equals the price ratio at the consumer optimum. Remember, it looks like this. The slope of the indifference curve is going to be tangent to the slope of the budget constraint. So what we see is the marginal rate of substitution equals the ratio of the prices. And that's, that's got to be one thing that holds at the, at the consumer optimum. And the other thing that's got to that's be true is that the consumer's, the consumer's optimum bundle exhausts all of the income. That is, that we're on the budget constraint. So this gives us two equations and two unknowns. The two unknowns are x and y, and once we solve for those, those will be our Cobb-Douglas demands. Let's go ahead and solve this system of two equations and two unknowns. I'm going to do it in a very particular way. First things first, I'm going to multiply both sides of the slope's equal condition by x and by py. Now once I get this expression, I can go ahead and think of px times x as just something I can substitute out of this second equation. Now what you'll see is on the left hand side here we've got py times y in both terms. We can factor that out 
Let's get a common denominator in this, uh, in this expression here that's multiplying PY times Y. And now what you'll see is that the alphas in the numerator will cancel. We'll be left with 1 over 1 minus alpha. Now we can just go ahead and use that fact to go ahead and solve for Y. Invert and multiply by that fraction that's multiplying y. This is the Cobb-Douglas demand for good y. Now let's clean up some of this algebra. Well, what we see is that we can use the budget constraint now to plug in and solve for a good x's demand. So let's go ahead and do that. Plug the demand for good y back into the budget constraint and we can solve for x. So now what we see is we plug in the demand for y and in the demand for y, we get a cancellation uh, with the py that's multiplying it. We bring this term over to the right-hand side. And so once you bring this term over to the right-hand side, uh, and you can look at the coefficients here, this 1 will cancel with the implicit 1 in front of i, and we'll be left with alpha i on the right-hand side. Divide by px, and we get our uh, demand, our Cobb-Douglas demand for good x. Now, the interesting thing about these demands is how they relate to the original Cobb-Douglas utility function. If you ask yourself what fraction of the consumer's income does he spend on good X, the answer to that question is actually alpha. It's the share parameter in the Cobb-Douglas utility function. And the way you can see that is actually in this particular way that I solve for this utility function. I'm going to go ahead and clean some, some of this up here. Just before I divided by the price to solve for x, I had this expression. And this expression is how you should think about Cobb-Douglas demand. On the left hand side, you've got the expenditures on good x. And on the right hand side, you've got how that relates to the amount of income that this consumer has. And in fact, this share parameter it's a number between 0 and 1, so 0 0.3, uh, that would tell you that you're spending 30% of your income on good X. And it doesn't matter what the price is, that that's in, in the Cobb-Douglas utility function, that's the way that it just works out mathematically. And so a useful trick if you want to, uh, if you're given a Cobb-Douglas utility function, you can forego all of this math, or at least you know what the answer is right off the bat. If someone tells you utility function is Cobb-Douglas with the share parameter alpha, as long as the exponents add up to 1, that's our standard classical Cobb-Douglas utility function. And because the exponents add up to 1, you know that, that that alpha means that it is the share of income that this consumer uh, spends on that, that good. For, for good y this holds as well. The exponent on y tells you the share of income that the consumer devotes to y at the consumer optimum. Th this fact uh, that we get this share of expenditures on a particular good uh, coming right out of the utility function makes Cobb-Douglas uh, utility functions easy and convenient. And that is the big reason why you see so much of them in microeconomics.